Hello and welcome to Historic Beverly's Spotlight Talk presenting an Israel Trask teapot. My name is Sarah and I'm the programs manager here at Historic Beverly. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of the Israel Trask teapots that we have here in our collection. This teapot is a typical Israel Trask design and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it as well as the history of teapots in general today. During the talk, you will be seeing me switching between sharing some slides and viewing the object. Um, and I will try to let you know when I'm about to switch because there may be a slight delay during these transitions. Okay, so to start, we're gonna begin in a shared screen so that we can talk a little bit about uh, the history of some teapots. Okay. So this is a Chinese teapot from the collection at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. The teapot as we know it was likely invented in China during the Yuan Dynasty, which existed from 1279 to 1368. The Yuan Dynasty was China's first foreign-led dynasty in between the Song and the Ming Dynasty. It was established by Kublai Khan, the leader of the vast Mongol Empire, um, but it did eventually fall due to rebellion. These early teapots were probably derived from cer ceramic kettles and wine pots, which were made of bronze and other metals and were a feature of Chinese life for thousands of years. These early teapots um, are also very small by Western standards because they were generally designed for simply a single drinker and the Chinese actually would drink the tea directly from the spout. So skipping ahead a few hundred years from when the end of the 17th century, uh, tea was shipped from China to Europe as part of the export of exotic spices and luxury goods. Tea drinking in Europe at this time was initially limited to the upper classes, mainly due to the expense and the cost of needing to provide all the materials to drink tea. By the 18th century, like their European counterparts, American colonials began drinking quite a bit of tea, and Boston became one of the major epicenters for tea importation. Now here we see a colonial teapot from the National Museum of American History. This teapot is porcelain, and porcelain teapots were available in the colonies, but in very short supply because of the difficulty of manufacturing porcelain and then importing it across the sea to the colonies made it very expensive. And the high cost of porcelain teapots led to the proliferation of silver and pewter teapot production and artistry in American teapots. Seen here is an amber type of Israel Trask, the gentleman who made the teapot we'll be discussing today. So Israel Trask was born on October 28th 1786 and grew up in the Gloucester Crossing area of Beverly and it's noted in the diary of Stevens Baker that in 1805 Trask and he were apprenticed to John Ellingwood a silversmith who worked at the corner of Vestry and Cabot streets. However Ellingwood soon gave up the business to answer a call to the ministry and this created an opportunity for Israel Trask to purchase the bill's business. And on the left, we see um, a pen and ink drawing of what the Israel Trask shop um, looked like. And then on the right, we see a photograph of that same building um, circa roughly about mid 1970s. This picture is from 1988 and it's of the kiln that was behind the shop. Um, and the bits of the kiln still remain and are still visible behind the Trask building today. This is the Israel Trask House, which is located at 12 Thorndike Street, and it still stands today. Um, you can learn more about Israel Trask and his home, as well as other kind of prominent Beverly residents on our Thorndike Street walking tour. So stay tuned for the next time that we present that, whether virtually or um, as the actual walking tour. And here we see a variety of other pieces that um, were produced by Trask that are here in the historic Beverly collection. So soon after purchasing the shop, Trask began to manufacture many fine items in pewter, including castor and cruet sets, sugar bowls and creamers, church communion chalices, whale oil lamps, and coffee pots and teapots. 
Israel soon hired his brothers, Oliver and George, to work with him, and he also hired a neighbor, Eben Smith. And uh, local tradition indicates that Smith started his work working life as a cabinet maker, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we're looking at the teapot. Okay, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and unshare my screen with you guys to take a look at the teapot in particular. You may see a slight delay before the pot comes up. Alrighty, so this brings us to our spotlight object from our collection, the Israel Trask teapot. Now this federal style teapot was made by Israel Trask as part of his first large order, which was a hundred dozen for Shreve, Crump, and Lowe in Boston. And the legend of Trask Pewter and this piece in particular stems from a very old story, which was supposedly that um, during the time of the embargoes of the War of 1812 with England, it was very difficult to procure um, new items, luxury, things of that nature. And there was a woman who um, was in desperate search of a new teapot. And so she was visiting all the stores around here trying to purchase a teapot but could not find any. So because of the embargo, the English supply had been shut off and there were no teapots in stock. But fortunately for her, a young Israel Trask was standing nearby. And Mrs. Ball, he said, if you give me a sack full of old teapots, I will melt them down and will make you as fine a new teapot as ever came from old England. Mrs. Ball agreed, and the old teapots were melted in a kiln, cooled on iron plates, and rolled out, and were then fashioned into such beautiful new pewter teapots that a short time later an order was given for 100 dozen of a similar design. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the details of this teapot in particular. Um, you're going to see my hands coming into the picture, and they will be gloved, so I'm just going to put my gloves on quickly before you see my hands come in because of course we want to practice good preservation. Okay. Now, looking at the teapot, we can see that it does have a very cylindrical drum-shaped body. You can see the shape of the teapot. Um, and along the top, there are rows of beading. Very intricate, very ornate. We also notice, of course, a wooden handle on the teapot, which does indicate that this teapot was produced at a time when Trask was working with Eben Smith, and most likely Eben Smith produced this lovely wooden handle that we see here. We also see that the spout on the teapot is very straight. There's no kind of ornate carvings or there's no um, kind of waves or curves in it. Um, these straight spouts were very typical of Trask's early work. Um, on the front and back of the teapot, we do see etched shields. Um, one side has an A and one has an S. And our research indicates that this teapot belongs to a woman named Abigail Smith. And I'm going to go ahead and pick the teapot up, bring it a little bit closer to the camera to kind of highlight some of the features. So we see the shield with the carvings. We see the beading along the top the wooden handle, and the straight spout. I'm going to go ahead and put the teapot back down. Okay, and I'm going to take off my gloves. Alrighty. And so um, Trask did begin his work with the traditional silver and pewter of the time. He is considered a pioneer since he was the first in America to make Britannia metal, or more often known as Britannia ware, which was first produced in England in 1769 or 1770, roughly then, um, and then in his Cabot Street shop here in America in 1813. Now, Britannia ware is a specific type of um, pewter alloy, which is favored for its silvery appearance and smooth surface. The composition by weight is typically about 92% tin, 6% antimony and 2% copper, whereas pewter is traditionally composed of 85 to 99% tin mixed with um, copper, antimony, bismuth, and sometimes silver or lead, although the use of lead is much less common today. Um, pieces made from Britannia ware were favored because they were lighter in weight, harder, but also thinner than previous teapots had been. 
And Britannia had and continues to have very useful purposes. Um, it's often used as a base for silver plating. And just a fun little fact, up until 2016, it was actually used um, inside of the Oscar statues. So um, several of our fav favorite actors and actresses have some Britannia wear in their homes. Um, now, however, they are made of bronze. Alrighty. So I'm gonna go ahead and reshare my screen with you guys, just to talk about a few other little final pieces here. You should see it popping up in just a moment. Perfect, that's the slide we just saw. Okay, so even though this teapot does not have it, um, Israel Trask did have a maker's mark, which we see here. Um, this is an example that's seen on um, various other pieces here in our collection. And Israel Trask is buried here in Beverly in Central Cemetery. So when the weather warms up, you can certainly head on over and visit his grave. Um, and we will talk about him on some of our um, cemetery walking tours and our Beverly Burials lectures, so keep an eye out for those. And I just want to end quickly and just mention that um, all images are from the Historic Beverly, or all the images from the Historic Beverly collection can be found in our online collection at the link that you see on the screen. We did reference an exhibit catalog from 2008 of an exhibit that took place here at Historic Beverly called Trask and Smith, Pewter in Early America. And thank you guys so much for attending this Spotlight Talk. We look forward to seeing you at another program soon. We will have more Spotlight Talks. You can visit our website at historicbeverly.net to see when those are. And we will have some more programs and lectures and walking tours available remotely through Zoom. So check out our website as well for when those will be taking place. Thanks. Bye.